Now let's finish up this section on the heart, physiology of the heart, and uh, we're going to take a look at a very important slide here. Uh, the cardiac output is the product of the heart rate times the stroke volume. So the equation is the CO, the cardiac output is equal to the heart rate, and multiply it by the stroke volume. Okay, so the heart rate is actually easy. It's under the control of the autonomic nervous system, and it will increase if there's sympathetic input, and it will decrease if there's parasympathetic input. Now the stroke volume is trickier because the stroke volume is determined by how much blood comes back. It also is determined by the force of the contraction and that in turn is all determined by various other factors. So um, let's take a look over here first. The end diastolic volume depends on the venous return and that depends largely by the skeletal muscle pump, also on the respiratory pump. It also depends on venous constriction. It also depends on how much volume is in your system overall. It depends on your kidneys, how they work. Um, so there are a lot of factors. And the presence of any diuretics, um, maybe too much salt, electrolyte balance. So there's many factors that play a role. We'll take a look at that in the next chapter when we talk about blood pressure and blood pressure regulation. So um, the end diastolic volume that feeds into the stroke volume, of course, um, that is big. It's it, There are many factors that, have, that are playing a role. Also, of course, the force of the contraction. And that is determined by the contractility, and that in turn is, of course, determined by a lot of sympathetic in input, also the presence of things like digitalis, calcium availability, some other factors. So you'll have fun taking a look at the stroke volume as a part of the uh, cardiac output equation. The heart rate is actually relatively simple because that's just sympathetic versus uh, parasympathetic input. Now, finally, a few words about pathophysiology of the heart and atherosclerosis is a big problem. It means that you have a hardening of the blood vessels. And so basically that can come in from various factors. You could have arteriosclerosis by just simply calcium deposits as you get older, your blood vessels they lose as elasticity um, you might end up also as plaque production and the plaque they could come in from various places one big thing is diabetes in diabetes you're going to have um, high sugar in the blood and you might think well what's the big deal about that i don't care i have a little extra sugar well the problem is that the sugar when the concentration gets too high it forms crystals and these crystals they act as tiny little razor blades that are scratching and injuring the, the very fragile endothelium of your blood vessels. And so now, now that you have an injury in this endothelium, then your immune system kicks in and inflammation kicks in and you're going to end up having some platelets that will aggregate there and um, inflammatory processes that will um, sort of um, change the permeabilities there and, and add to a narrowing of the vessel. Then you have more deposits per, per, um, perhaps coming in. You might also have high cholesterol where you have cholesterol deposits, smoking and the deposits that come from smoking, from tobacco smoking mostly, and then HD instance for hypertension. So you're adding extra wear and tear on an already damaged blood vessel system. Um, other things that come in are cytokines. These are substances produced by the white blood cells to communicate with one another and activate different branches of the immune system. And so you might end up with small platelet aggregates with macrophages coming in trying to fix the the inflammatory processes, you might have also lymphocytes that are coming in and uh, potentially causing more damage. So um, inflammation and sort of your immune system can be counterproductive in this whole process. Now, it is normal that your the elasticity of your of your blood, cardiovascular system is going to decrease over time. That means that pretty much 
you're going to have atherosclerosis um, just depending on how long you live. If you are very old, then uh, your cardiovascular system will have some form of atherosclerosis. Uh, you will have calcium deposits, you will lose elasticity over time, you will have this, um, you know, uh, a natural narrowing of the um, cardiovascular system because there's just wear and tear over time. And um, what this can look like, as seen here, atherosclerosis, you have, you have a, a thrombus and that is filling up much of the volume here of this blood vessel. Uh, you have a plaque that has formed and then a thrombus that lodges in there and you can see that space is getting really small right there. And a diagram of something like this might look like is here. And um, you can see this is very narrow pathway here for the blood to go through. This isn't one of your coronary arteries. What do you think you're going to feel like? You might think, oh my gosh, I'm going to be probably out of breath and I'm going to have chest pain or something like that. And the truth is, and the scary truth is, that you have no symptoms whatsoever. You might be running around with a narrowed area like this and have no idea. It won't even take a thrombus of this size to clog up this area right here. It doesn't take much for something to get clogged up right here and then you have complete blockage and when that has happened no more blood flow is going through you're going to have a heart attack if this is a coronary artery you have a stroke if it's in the brain you have a pulmonary embolism if it's in the lungs and any of these could be deadly so um, atherosclerosis is something that kills uh, many people uh, it's um, increases the risk of dying from cardiovascular com complications uh, dramatically so uh, something to keep in mind. And here is an imaging um, picture that shows you normal blood flow over here in this area and the same area image right here. You can see there's no blood flow going through because uh, there's a contrast um, dye that was injected. And you can see there's no blood flow going through in this area. So this is a very occluded area. Uh, most There are different ways you can go about um, a blocked area like this. Um, a lot of people do what's called bypass surgery. And what you can see right here this is a rather dramatic example of bypass surgery. So basically, I guess you're assuming that there's some sort of blockage right here. I mean, I can't imagine anybody actually tapping into the aortic arch to go up around something. It's more likely that a surgeon will take a different piece from a blood vessel of your, another part of your body and remove it and then use it to um, make sort of a bypass from here to go around here. Let's say that's the clogged area right here. So that's more likely. Uh, this is uh, over dramatized, but I guess it brings home the point. Bypass surgery, you want to bypass the clogged area. And um, if the, the narrowing is in a major coronary artery, you definitely you don't want to play around with it. You want to go around uh, the area that's blocked or almost blocked and create a bypass. And most people that have those kind of problems, they don't have it just in one place, but they need triple or quadruple bypass surgery. Another way of uh, preventing any further cloggage is um, to insert um, little, it's almost like a filter that uh, makes sure that any kind of um, a thrombus or some clotted blood will not be able to travel through your cardiovascular system, potentially, you know, um, causing a 100% blockage in an already narrowed area. So those are other options. And then a lot of people that have had a uh, pulmonary embolism or maybe a heart attack or stroke, they get usually what's called blood thinners, which is basically coagulation inhibitors, um, not just an aspirin, but something stronger than that to prevent any further clotting of blood. And um, usually it's a multifaceted therapy that's done for people that have atherosclerosis or have had already um, a stroke or a, um, a heart attack.